Hi everyone, my name is Tamit Saleh and welcome to my football debate for this week. If you haven't already, then please do subscribe as I release weekly videos for football, tennis and also Formula 1 race reviews. If you want to check out my last video where I discussed if VAR is good or bad for football and also how I would personally fix it, I'll put a, a link up here somewhere and also in the description below. This week I want to look at the Premier League which has of course begun again and I want to see and ask you guys which four teams will make the top four this season. This is a battle that goes on every year as of course finishing top four gives you a qualification for the Champions League. So yeah, without further ado, let's roll the intro. Here he is again. That's astonishing. Uh, it's absolutely world. <laughs> so, the Premier League top four battle. It's a battle that happens every season. And now there is really six teams in the Premier League. Six top quality teams fighting for four positions. Not like back in the days where there was like four guaranteed teams every season. There's six quality teams. In terms of who gets it, well, I'm sure most of you will agree that two of them are all but guaranteed. It'd be a major shock if either Man City or Liverpool don't finish in the top four this season. Out of the six teams, in terms of the title race, I believe it will be very similar to last season, which will be between Man City and Liverpool. They, of course, had that historic title race last season. I've never seen two teams like that, you know, almost perfect results in the run up uh, in the run up to the end of the season man city as you know won the league title last season by a single point they scored 98 points last season it was the second highest ever amount only beaten by themselves in the previous season where they amassed 100 points i don't expect to see any changes in terms of in terms of the top 2 if you ask me, I think Man City will win it again this season and become the fifth club ever to win three back-to-back -back top flight titles. They've signed two quality players in Rodri for that central midfield position, which I feel was their only position where they didn't have a quality backup. We, of course, have Fernandinho there, but yeah, they've added Rodri for 60 plus million. And they've also signed Cancelo from Juventus for the right back position. We saw um, Danilo move the other way in a player plus cash transfer deal. I feel like Man City have done very well in transfer window and I expect them to win the league again this season. Looking at Liverpool, you know, they came very close last season. It was, you know, it could have gone either way. It did help that they won the Champions League and recently they've won the Super Cup as well. So, you know, not all doom and gloom. However, they do really want that league title. It has eluded them since 1990. So, yeah, it's been almost 30 years now Liverpool haven't won the league. And with this team, I feel like it's their best shot. In terms of what I've seen in my lifetime, this is the strongest Liverpool squad I've ever seen with a great manager in Klopp as well. The reason I would put Man City again slightly ahead is Liverpool have done little to nothing in the transfer window. They've their highest, I mean, they signed someone for like a million, which, which is nothing really. They still have, you know, their very good squad. They've got Alex Oxlade-Chamberlain coming back from that long-term injury. So he's kind of like a new signing. But yeah, they've not really strengthened. For me, the key key to their success this season will be their front three. They've not really got any quality backup or options for them. They've got Origi and maybe Shakiri can play in those uh, wing positions. But yeah, if Firmino, Salah or Mane, if any one of them suffered a long-term injury, it would look very difficult for Liverpool. The defence is strong as ever with Joe Gomez coming back from injury as well. They've got Matip, uh, Lovren and Van Dijk as well, who's going for the Ballon d'Or. I've made a video on that as well. Please do check that out. So yeah, for me, the top two will not change. It will be, again, a battle between Manchester City and Liverpool. I'd say it's probably 60 to 40 in favour of Man City there. In the third spot, I believe Tottenham... Out of the other four teams, they're probably the strongest team still. I know they had a very poor end to the season last season. However, I do feel that because they were still in the Champions League and you know they made it to the final there, that had a bit of an effect. But yeah, I still feel like Tottenham will get that top four spot, probably third. They've signed Ndombele, which is their record signing at uh, 50 plus million. He'll bring extra quality to the club. And you know when a team has a player like Harry Kane, you know, he Harry Kane, whether you love him or hate him, he's a quality, quality striker. 
he's one of those players that guarantees you 20 plus goals and looking at some of the other teams especially like Chelsea for instance they don't have a player like that so in terms of the goals they've got Harry Kane they've got Son who can get plenty himself you know another player I feel is crucial is Christian Eriksen they managed to hold on to him this season he's made it very clear he wants to leave but yeah Tottenham they're risking losing him for a free next summer however I feel like this is a decision they had to be had to make it's also very crucial in my opinion they you know do their best to try keep Christian Eriksen at the club when he came on against Villa he did change the dynamic of the game they were of course behind and then they won that game uh, 3-1 at, at the end he's one of those players you can't lose however personally uh, this is very similar to the, for instance, the Ramsey situation at Arsenal last season. I do feel like Christian Eriksen will leave the club. He's done as much as he can. There'll be top clubs like, you know, Real Madrid, Barcelona, Juventus perhaps. Big teams all across Europe that will be after him. And of course, if you do leave on the free, you get that added incentive that you're going to get a massive uh, wage wage increase you're going to get the signing on fee we had players like for instance Aaron Ramsey leaving on a free but then getting uh, 400,000 a year so if someone like Christian Eriksen leaves on a free clubs will be willing to pay him above and beyond the wager man because they're getting a quality player probably you know a hundred million pound player for free so yeah we taught them still have for this season they still have Eriksen they've got you know players like I've said before quality players throughout the uh, throughout the side they've got Pochettino as manager and I believe they will take that third spot for the fourth spot in the Premier League now this is the obviously the fourth and final spot there's three teams I believe really close to each other in terms of quality and it's going to be I believe as close as last season we had you know we had Arsenal Chelsea Tottenham and even United to some extent fighting for that uh, fourth spot in the Premier League last season I believe it's going to be something very similar we look at Manchester United to begin with they finished sixth last season it was a very disappointing campaign for them uh, but they had that period when Solskjaer signed on as manager it seemed like he had that you know incredible turnaround they had a very tough time a tough start to the season with Mourinho he didn't get the signings he wanted he wanted you know players like Harry Maguire and he wanted that defensive centre-back especially they, I mean, they've come in this season, however, it's a season too late for uh, Mourinho. And then when Solskjaer came in, they went on that incredible run where I think they won 11 or 12 games on the on the bounce, um, beating PSG, especially in that second leg in Paris. That was one of their highlights of the season. And yeah, they've added Harry Maguire for a world record fee for a defender, £80 million they've signed him for, and Juan Bissaka for £50 million in that right-back position. They've really strengthened uh, the defence. It looks like Pogba is staying. I don't believe United will now sell him as they cannot buy any players to replace him with, with the English window uh, transfer window already closing. And it's time for players like Martial and Rashford to step up. They've sold Lukaku. So that competition at the uh, uh, the front positions has you know decreased a lot. Uh, but, but now, really, Martial and Rashford they need to have great seasons. I, you know, if they can get twenty plus goals each between them, or like you know similar to that amount, they will have a really strong season. Oligana Sosha, he's had that introduction now. It's time to step on now. He's had you know roughly what six months with the club already, so he knows the players he's working with. And yeah, United, they're one of the three teams I feel like will battle for that fourth spot. The team they beat in the opening weekend 4-0, the Manchester United beat, is Chelsea. Now Chelsea for me, I feel like out of the six teams will have the toughest time this season. Uh, they've got a new manager, a new inexperienced manager, Frank Lampard, who's of course a club legend there. They've lost their star player, um, Eden Hazard, to Real Madrid. For the past what, five, six seasons, he's carried that club. He's got the goals that where you know the strikers could not deliver. Amazing player and he will be sorely missed by Chelsea. And they couldn't even replace him. They're, of course, uh, going through a transfer ban, which is for this window and uh, the January window. So they cannot sign a player until next summer. This gives Frank Lampard a very tough task. He's only had one year in management with uh, Derby County, of course. But also at the same time, I feel like this gives them a bit of leeway and a bit of time. We know in the past Chelsea have not, you know, thought twice about sacking managers. They have a bit of a history of sacking managers time and time again. 
But with Lampard now, especially with the situation he's in, he's lost his star player. You know, he's uh, not managed to sign anyone. And also the fact that he's a club legend. I feel like this will buy him a bit more time. For me, this is like a bonus season. And, you know, with previous seasons, Chelsea, they're expecting a title challenge. And the bare minimum is top four. However, for this season, I feel like the scales have swung a little bit. For them, top four will be a very successful season. I feel like this will give Lampard that time as well, especially with the owner, that even if he's, you know, sixth or fifth, his job will not be on the line, as top four will now result in a great season, not just the minimum expectations. Lampard has some young players that he's giving opportunities to, and, well, he needs to this season, having not been able to sign anyone. He's got young players like Loftus-Cheek, um, Hudson Odoi and Mason Mount who we saw uh, this uh, this past week very promising young player as well it's now their time to really shine you know players like Hudson Odoi for instance there's been a lot of newspaper talk where young players at Chelsea are not getting the opportunity well this is your season now if you cannot perform this season you're not going to be here next season or you, you know it's going to be very tough for you because there's a lot of opportunities for young players. Lampard has shown that he's willing to give them the opportunity. So this season at Chelsea, it's the young players' time to shine. They did sign Pulisic. They did get that deal across in January. However, they did loan him straight back to Dortmund for the remainder of the season. He is now with the club. No, we've we've seen him. You know, we've not seen much of him. However, what we have seen, he looks like a quality player. Now, I'm not saying he's going to replace Hazard straight away with the goals and the assists. But if he can reach a decent level, then I think Chelsea, you know, do not write them off. I've seen a lot of people say that Chelsea will not get top four this season. La da, they're in a bit of a mess right now. But they, you have to remember, they still have quality players across across the pitch. They have the world record uh, transfer fee for a goalkeeper, Kepa. He, you know, he had a very, you know, good to decent first season. They've got players like, you know, Christensen, Rudiger, Willian, Pulisic. You know, Kante, of course, he was phenomenal in the Super Cup, I must say. he, Yeah, I hope he does get to play in his favoured position. Under Sarri last season, you know, the Kante favoured position, that defensive midfield role, it was given to Jorginho a lot. However, I feel like to get the best out of Kante, you have to play him there because he's the best player. They've got still, you know, they've got Kovacic, Jorginho, Barkley, if he can shine. They've got Emerson, you know, quality players across the pitch. And you know, with the pressure slightly taken off them where people aren't really expecting much. Let's see what Frank Lampard can do. He's either going to have a blinding season and a top four would be a major success or he might be a complete failure. Well, not a complete failure, but, you know, have a poor season finishing eighth or tenth or something. Um, but I feel like his job is secure at least uh, for the rest of the season, going into next season as well where he can eventually sign some players. And finally, we have Arsenal Football Club. Now, they out of all the all the teams i feel like they've had one of the best transfer uh summers there was a lot of talk about uh, this 45 million budget that was that was just obviously nonsense they of course signed nicolas pepe for a club record 72 million pounds i'm really looking forward to seeing how this guy plays they were linked with zaha a lot in the summer but of course with pepe coming uh, that deal was 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 over nicolas pepe you know, he's going to now link up with the players like Lacazette and Obama Yang. That makes that front three really deadly. It is one of the, I would say, out of the top six teams, one of the best front threes, let's let's be honest, with Obama Yang guaranteed goals. He, of course, shared the golden boot last season with uh, Salah and Mane. We've got Lacazette, who's shown that he's a natural goal scorer. And also, I feel like Lacazette, his heart is with Arsenal. He, he said already he wants to be a future captain there. And we've got a young prospect in Nicolas Pepe. We've got Ozil as well in that squad. Now, look, I know Ozil had a very tough time. Everyone harps on about this 350k wages. But if he can perform and provide the assist for the front three this season, then that attack for Arsenal is a force to be reckoned with. They still have some defensive frailties, I believe. They signed Tierney. Uh, from Celtic, which was, you know, the, that dragged on for the whole summer. And they did sign David Luiz on transfer deadline day for 8 million. Now, I believe this is a bargain. 8 million for David Luiz, you know, he was a first choice player for Chelsea a lot of last season and probably would have been this season as well. So 8 million for him, great. He's not a long-term, you know, replacement. He's just like a, maybe for a season or two until they can maybe next summer away also they get uh, Saliba and they could probably sign a you know a young and more expensive um, centre-back he has got you know his occasional 
reliability problems. He has got a mistake in him. However, looking at the other centre backs like you know Mustafi and so on, and even Koscielny who's left, I feel like David Luiz is an upgrade. So Arsenal will be the type of club where you know they could still concede two or three goals, but with their front you know lineup, it's a case of who scores more. What will really define Arsenal this season, I believe, is how well they do in the crunch matches. You know, those tough situations where, you know, you're not going to score three or four every game. It's them 1-0 victories that really either win you the league or get you into that top four. We saw it last season where, you know, their, their last few games in the Premier League, there was it was nothing difficult. It was a fairly, you know, standard set of fixtures. I feel like, you know, if they had just got that one victory in, in those games against you know, the likes of Everton or Crystal Palace, they would have got that top four. They only missed out on that top four uh, place by just one point. They were one point behind Tottenham. So if one of those draws became a victory, then yeah, they would have got that top four. So and not, you know, not a lot of work for them to do. It is, of course, Unai Emery's second season in charge of Arsenal. So he's learned the league. Um, he should He should know the league a lot better. And he's got more players that, he wants the signings he's made. It's now Una Emery's club, and I feel like this season he must get the best results and get that top four. I feel like his job may be on the line if you know the season doesn't go according to plan. That's now looking at the roundup of the big six. I don't see any other club really getting that Champions League spot. So yeah, I want to ask you guys: who do you think will finish in that top four? Personally, I think Liverpool, Man City, and Tottenham to some extent are guaranteed of the top four. It is a fight for that fourth spot, in my opinion, between Arsenal, Chelsea and Manchester United. If I had to pick one now, personally, I would think Arsenal are going to get that top four. I feel like Chelsea is going to be too much to ask for Frank Lampard in his first season. And with United as well, you know, we've seen that they can get these results. However, with Solskjaer last season, after that, after he got the job, he went downhill from there. Out of the f teams this year, I feel like, yeah, Arsenal, they're going to get that top four. However, let me know what you think. Please do leave a comment below on to your predictions for the top four. And if you've enjoyed this video, please do leave a thumbs up and subscribe for future content like this. Thank you very much. Game, set, and match. Game, set, and match.